Well, thanks for watching Eli Works. Make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. We're over 50 followers now. That's pretty neat. Thank you guys. So here we are with the Eastwood VersaCut El Cheapo Plasma Cutter. I got it in a Christmas deal with the, the TIG. Anyway, 40 amps. I run like 60 PSI air normally. I don't, it just seems to work okay there. Here's your air hose hookup. And here's, it's like the high frequency start, I think. So I need to hook that up. We have to take a torch apart to see what that really goes to. This is what hooks up to the switch. Turn on the plasma. It's normally hooked up to this trigger. And then right here is where the ground cable plugs in. I'm going to switch over to a torch that I used years ago when I first got this plasma. And uh, I dropped it in the snow. And there's a big flash inside, so I called the company and they sent me this one I just showed you. Well, I opened it up and looked at it. Everything ohms out okay, so it might work. And I think we're gonna we're gonna test that today. See if it turns on. Oh short now. We're gonna leave that trigger wire up because the other one's cut off of it to have the Arduino control it and I'd like to have a little control on the testing. My advice is clean your shop. If you have a clean shop, you can get the stuff done way faster. For some reason, I do not possess the clean shop gene. Too many irons in the fire. Hook up the air connection. I just lightly snug it. The mysterious red wire. So I'm not exactly sure if it's going to work or not. We're about to find out. Kind of ignoring a white wire. That's set up for later. Well, that looks like it works to me. I think we'll use that one. Now that I'm tangling this damn rat's nest with plasma cutter cables. So Pete from Pete's Tools took his plasma cutter and put a ground strap on the nozzle. So so the light without touching the grounded piece. Haven't tried it yet. Well, let's see if it works. Well, that's pretty sweet. Normally, that torch would just kind of sputter a little bit, but nothing would happen. So that seems like that will work good. Hopefully that is the key to keeping the EMI from screwing with all my electronics. We'll see. Well, we won't actually know if that's what did it. And I'm not, if it works, I'm not taking it off there. I don't have enough money for more parts. So here's a look inside the Eastwood uh, VersaCut 40. Like hose for the pressure gauge, air pressure regulator, water separator. I have pretty dry air here anyway. Solenoid, 
Down here is a drain pack cap. A bunch of magic stuff. Some of you might be wondering about my air supply. I just have a little dryer filter thing here. And then I got three quarter inch copper pipe that runs up there, kind of loops over and comes back down. And then shoots all the way across above this ladder over that back wall. There's another drop over there. That goes over back there. And then down. And I can either shut this valve and send it through this refrigerant dryer. Or I can leave it open. And just run it straight through. Comes down. It's one inch rubber hose. Going to a Quincy. Quincy QT5. And that's it.